touch upon the rights of the woman or the bride. May I ask you, why do you begin with the woman or the wife? Because, you know, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. Why would we begin with the rights of the wives? First of all, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran, ayah number 228, This ayah keeps the perfect balance between the rights and the duties. Not only of the wife, but the wife and the husband. And lahunna, the pronoun refers to the wives, the feminine. So Allah the Almighty says, wives, they have dues similar to those which are due upon them. Hmm. They have rights which are similar to the obligations which are due upon them. Likewise, for men, they have rights and they owe obligations to their spouses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began by saying, lahunna, for the wives, they have... Uh, rights they have dues so in this case uh, we'll begin by discussing those rights which the wife deserves to be paid on full mm -hmm. from the husband beginning with the financial rights and again why do we begin with the financial rights not any other rights the protection mm -hmm. the love the affection because the financial right is actually is the actual beginning mm -hmm. because it takes place even before the marriage contract and before uh, consummating the marriage which is securing the dowry mm. i know we spoke about it before in an episode discussing the dowry and all the ahkam of the dowry but it's okay to remind the viewers that the dowry is the first of the financial rights which the husband owes to the wife whether immediately or if they agree to defer the entire dowry or certain amount of the dowry so we in the, in the last in the episode where we actually spoke about Mahari in a lot more depth, you also said that it is a, a debt, you know, and it should be paid off as soon as possible. Correct. Well, the first right we see the financial right, the dowry. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah An-Nisa, nisa sadqatihinna nihla. We already agreed to that. Then the rest of the ayah says, فَإِن طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُوهُ حَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا And uh, this segment of the ayah shows that when the wife collects the dowry, it becomes hers. And neither the parents of the bride nor the husband have the right to ask her anything of this dowry. It's hers. So the ayah says, إِن طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسَ If the wife decides to remit some of the dowry, or foregoes, or gives you a part of the dowry as a gift, then enjoy it. It's halal. كُلُوهُ حَنِيئًا مَرِيئًا With pleasure. What if she doesn't? This is now her position. You cannot say, but I'm the one who gave you the money. Mm. Well, the money was a compensation for agreeing to marry you. It's sadaq, and it has become hers the uh, willing gift and it's irrefundable it's not refundable mm. and that's why sometimes when a couple get married and the husband happen to buy a lot of jewelry for the bride and that is perceived as a part of the dowry or the dowry then uh, he was in debt he's in need he wants to start a project he wants to buy a car so he says honey can I take a loan from you what well, I don't have I only have gold can I take a part of that and inshallah soon as uh, I possess the amount I will pay you back or pay it off yeah sure so she will give him whatever many people take this money and they never return it assuming that we're one mm. yes you're one but when it comes to the financial position everyone is independent yeah see this is important Shay, because uh, in especially in a non-muslim society especially where I'm from uh, in England uh, you know, when people become married, their finances are, are like you say, they're one. <coughs> but you're saying that in an Islamic uh, life that you should always be separate? Not like what you're mm. saying, but I'm talking about I have a position. This position has nothing to do with your position. Mm. When they have a joint account where the wife can go to the grocery store or pay the bills and the utilities, this is great. 
but the man is working and she is working or the man is working alone and she has an access to the account. Now we're talking about the woman's position, mm -hmm. the wife's position. Let's say that she inherited something from her dad, her mom, her uncle. This inheritance is hers, is mm -hmm. hers. Mm -hmm. It is not for all of them. Mm -hmm. So if she willingly wants to give you part of that or all of that uh, as a gift, that's fine. Uh, but if you decided to take a part of it as a loan, then it's a loan which you must settle once you're capable to pay it off. Mm. Okay? Yeah. That is the meaning of If she doesn't give you any, then it's not yours. Yeah. If she remits part of it, or if she gives you a part as a gift, or if she gives you a loan, then you have the loan you have to pay off. Uh, if it is a gift, enjoy it. This is halal wudu without putting any pressure mm. on her. Then among the financial rights is النفقه. وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم. The man happens to be the guardian of the family and the family father. Why? One of the reasons, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, He's given this guardianship because He is in charge of supporting the family financially. So He works, He earns, He puts bread on the table, and He delivers whatever the house is in need for again bil ma'roof bil ma'roof means on a reasonable basis mm. so somebody's income is 20 grams and mashallah the house spends three or four or five he can afford it but somebody's earning is 2000 2800 and the house is in need for 3000 we're not gonna kill the man we're not gonna ask him to steal we're not going to ask him to, um, you know, to accept bribery in order to, uh, you know, to make it up or to come up with the difference. Then the house have to uh, squeeze itself in order to live in accordance with the income of the husband. Mm -hmm. So the word bil ma'roof means on reasonable basis. وَعَلَى الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ رِزْقُهُنَّ وَكِسْوَتُهُنَّ bil ma'roof. الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ he refers to the father of the child. Now the couple have a child. Who is in charge for covering the expenses? Al-Mawludi lahu, the father. And he's supposed to provide for the mother. He's supposed to provide for the child. And whatever the mother needs of clothing, of medications, of hospital bills, you know, uh, of food, uh, of uh, formula, milk, whatever. This is all. Uh, the duty of the husband to make available and to work hard to make available. What does the uh, ayah say again? وَعَلَى الْمَوْلُودِ لَهُ رِزْقُهُنَّ وَكِسْوَتُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ So you do not push somebody to the edge or keep demanding things you know that the husband cannot afford mm. and by the end you're just literally forcing him to steal or forcing him in, in some societies to take his life because he cannot afford it. No, do not push him to the edge.